Hi, I'm Jacob with Dynamic Defense Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about first responder skills in the pre-hospital setting, and specifically those skills are going to be covering the application of chest seals and dealing with sucking chest wounds. Okay, so let's actually talk about what a chest seal is and when it'd be appropriate to use one. A chest seal or occlusive dressing is a non-porous, airtight trauma medical dressing. Occlusive dressings generally have skin-safe adhesives that create a seal over the wound area. Some chest seals have built-in valves or vents that can help vent away air that is passively released from the wound site. Occlusive dressings are used to seal up penetration injuries to the torso from the clavicle or collarbone down to the navel or belly button. A common injury that requires a chest seal is the sucking chest wound. This wound is caused by penetrating trauma to the chest and can result in trapped air in the pleural space, which is the cavity the lungs are housed in. When air is trapped in the pleural cavity, there is a buildup of positive pressure that can lead to a fatal condition called tension pneumothorax. To prevent this, we can apply a chest seal to any penetrating wounds to seal off air access into the pleural space. Okay, so let's talk about some examples of occlusive dressings and chest seals. A very common one and a very recognized one would be the hyphen occlusive dressing from North American Rescue. There's a single dressing in here. It's got a red marked easy tear away sterile uh, package here. And it also has a sterile gauze inside of it that you can use to wipe away the wound. From the same company, it's the compact version and this is actually a two pack. So this one comes with one for an entrance and an exit wound. And it's a nice compact size so it'll fit in a lot of small, more compact med kits. Okay, so let's talk about application. First, we need to be sure that all life-threatening injuries have been dealt with. Things like massive trauma, obstructed airway, or if the patient needs CPR. We will deal with those first before managing a sucking chest wound. Okay, so now that we've dealt with any life-threatening injuries, we're gonna go ahead and expose and identify the injury. Hold pressure on the wound site to help control or prevent any further bleeding. Wipe away blood, fluid, or debris from the wound site. At the peak of exhalation, apply the chest seal centered over the penetration as well as possible. When using a vented chest seal, center the vent or valve directly over the penetration. Log roll the patient to check for exit wounds. It's really important that we always check for exit wounds or additional penetrations. If an exit wound is discovered, hold pressure and apply an additional chest seal following the same steps we just went over. Remember to apply the dressing at the peak of exhalation. Position conscious patients in the position that they're most comfortable in, and we're going to position unconscious patients with the injured side down so the working lungs aren't impeded by their own body weight. We're going to reassess these dressings and wounds often, at least every two to five minutes. Okay, so now that we've talked about chest seals, let's talk about improvising a chest seal. Whether you need to do so because you only have one chest seal with multiple penetration injuries, or you might not have a chest seal altogether. It's very simple to do and you only need two different materials to do so. The first thing you need is a non-porous airtight material of some kind, something like a Ziploc bag. The second thing you need is an adhesive strong enough to adhere that non-porous material to the patient without it coming off from sweat or blood or anything like that. Things like duct tape or surgical tape are going to work great for that. So how do we do it? Well, we're going to do it the same way we did it before. We're going to deal with our life-threatening injuries first, and then we're going to go ahead, wipe the wound, place the non-porous material over the patient and seal off all four sides, making sure it's airtight and no air can get in or out. If you'd like to make a vented chest seal, we can still do that in an improvised fashion. The only thing we're gonna do differently is leave the side that's facing down towards the ground open so that chest seal can vent on inhalation and exhalation. Now it is important to understand that currently there's actually not very much scientific data on the use of a vented chest seal versus a non-vented chest seal. The main objective we're going for here is just to simply keep air pressure from building in the pleural space, preventing a tension pneumothorax. Now what do we do if we actually start to see signs of a tension pneumothorax while reassessing the wound? And also what are the signs of a tension pneumothorax? Well, some main signs would be labored breathing, intense chest pain, jugular distension, and a really late sign would be tracheal deviation. Now what we can do when we see these signs is to do a maneuver called burping the wound. Now what is burping the wound? Well, it's pretty simple. All we're gonna do is peel back the occlusive dressing, 
wipe away any obvious blockage or debris. We're going to reapply that dressing with intentional downward pressure right at the peak of exhalation. And that pretty much sums it up. Obviously, again, we're going to need to be reassessing every two to five minutes. Now, this is ultimately a life-threatening situation, and it is a serious trauma medicine emergency. So we do need to get them to help as soon as possible. If you have any other questions, please reach out. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.